I'm not finished. Like, absolutely not. I want to get yeah, up yeah. there. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Diana, the siren is unleashed. You are back. <laughs> and more yeah. importantly, you're back on your own terms. Um, is this, this is the first time I get to speak to you? But yes. if I would have spoken to you, is it fair to say this would be the happiest Di uh, Diana that I could have spoken to? Oof. Oh, as well, I, I'm, <laughs> of course, no, I have to say yes. Um, <laughs> Not because you're talking that, to me, that obviously. Depends. My, my life hasn't been only drama, so... <laughs> right. <laughs> there, were, there were many happy years with, uh, with Sandria. There were many happy moments with Sandria. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it, it didn't went down like that. But um, I've been terribly happy, especially while touring the world and coming, for instance, to, uh, to Canada, where you're mm -hmm. from now. Um, but yes, I am quite happy now because it is very special to do uh, everything on my own terms. Yeah. Let me also um, mention that it's also quite hard. It's not it's right. not only fun and fun and games because uh, I also have all the responsibility and I need to be like everything at once, which is very complicated at some sometimes. Right. Um, so it's 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 a lot, but it's my lot. So, mm -hmm. and that's 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 a truly amazing feeling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with with Nightfall, we have last time I checked like something thirty three million, and of course that that's. Gigantic, and I, you cannot even fathom what that's like. That many people, if you would put them into a, a field for a performance, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So that's a lot, but still, the, the views I am now receiving on my own videos, by far not into the millions, but they feel so much more special because it's all mine. It's all me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, everything you see there is, is me, and that's. That means something, yeah. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. make me happy terribly. I've gathered an amazing team. Yes. And um, not only are they very skilled, it's much more important to say that they are very kind people, willing, helpful. Um, they never work by the hour. Yes. <laughs> they, they are there. To support me because they believe in me and that is i i think um the best lesson that i've learned is that that is the basis on, on which you can build a, a solo career or a company mm -hmm. or whatever you need to if you work with people you need to work with people you can trust for 200 percent and who wants to give you something and then help you reach the next level and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i certainly managed to gather those uh, people around me and um, that you want me to name them well i mean let, let's 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 go to one person in particular that we can't get around i mean i don't think there's a symphonic metal band or project out there anymore that is not working with yost uh, these days uh, or, uh <laughs> yeah there must be uh, a few though because oh, otherwise yeah. I, they wouldn't have the time to work with me, right? <laughs> true, true, true. But I mean, we just see him popping up everywhere to the point that I'm almost like, should we just call it Yoast Metal at this point uh, with with what he's all working on? But you've got a you yeah. you, you you definitely have a, a great team around you. Um, yeah. Was it because you're doing things differently? We're we're do mm -hmm. you are releasing an album in what we would yes. call in the industry a fire a, a waterfall approach and an extended one in your case where every few months a new song is released until we have the bulk of an album out that's a different yeah. approach for many people that you work with as well so um how was that getting that team not just around you but also on the same vision that you had well it's an, actually something we grew into i mean yoast i of course yoast van uh, uh my producer I won't say our but i'm not the queen so it's just my producer <laughs> <laughs> um, I've worked with him, with Sandria, that's actually how I've gotten to know him. 
And then there was Ex Libris, which is my progressive metal band. Uh, mm-hmm. I founded that uh, and even way before I joined Sandia. Um, but we put out an album in 2019, and that was also produced and co-written, part of it, by Joost. Um, so for me, there was only one producer I could work with, because he understands what I can do as a singer. He's also uh, someone who can challenge me right. without getting me too, too pissed off uh, <laughs> while recording. <laughs> and he's very open. Uh, to understanding what it is like being a classically trained singer behind the mic um, mm-hmm. in a, a very, um, how should I put this, strange environment to sing in for a classically trained singer because I am very much used to work with the room right. uh, and to have my have my sound bounce off the walls and come back to me and that's how I, how I build and build my resonance and add all, all well, I won't be too technical here, but add all kinds of, of colors to, you know, get the best uh, yeah, yeah. sound in everything out there. But in a, in a recording room, it's so dry that um, uh, usually the first time it was like, how do people sing here? <laughs> and he's totally open for that um, yeah. uh, compared to other producers who might say, well, just sing, you're a singer. Yeah, yeah, so sure. that's something I really need. He really knows how to um, well, make you feel at home, make you feel safe, and then, then the voice will open up. So that's what he does best. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's a brilliant um, um, musician. So he's, it's always a treat to, to work with him, you know? Because yeah, as yeah, soon yeah. as I'm stuck, he's like, oh, but we can go this way, we can go that way. And I'm like, like mind blown. (laughs) You mentioned something I want to touch on uh, just a little bit more because you say like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm this classical trained singer that is, you know, doing things in a, in a, in a, for me, weird way. So globally, And what's really cool to see that it's also really catching on here in North America, there is a whole new wave of symphonic metal out there. Like, uh, there mm-hmm. was a clear explosion of symphonic metal in the late 90s in Scandinavia and Netherlands. And then some bands kept going, other bands kind of fell, fell off the radar a little bit. But now symphonic metal is in a new golden era, if you will. And there's a ton of new bands out there uh, thinking yeah. about bands like Elaine and at Infinitum and in the Netherlands Blackbriar that um, most of those bands have put modern approaches, modern sounds more front and center in their yeah. sound. And when you released That's your true. first new single, um, uh, there were so many comments of people going like, yes, somebody putting that operatic style or classical yeah. style back into symphonic metal. Um, uh, that that that's cool to see that people re- reacted that way. But before we mm-hmm. even go there, when you mentioned, you know, oh well, I started before Alexandria, and it's a long time ago. In those days, like the fact that twenty years later, um, this genre is so popular and more mm-hmm. healthy maybe than ever before. Also, if you look at Wooden Temptation and Epica, what they're doing these days, they're seemingly at the at the top of their game after twenty five yeah. years. Um, does that blow your mind? Uh, do you ever take time the, the step back and go like, well, I never thought this would go the way it went when we were starting? Um, um, I don't think that I ever sit back and enjoy. I do appreciate where I am now, mm-hmm. but I also also have the feeling that if I would do that, like sit back and relax, that would mean I would be at a standstill mm-hmm. and I have way too much drive for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has two sides. Yes, I appreciate it. And on the other way, I'm not finished. Like absolutely not. I want to get yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah. And um, yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> only the feeling of like now sitting 
sitting back and going like, oh yeah, that is nice. No, that that doesn't suit me. I have way yeah, yeah, too yeah. much compassion for that. Yeah. Uh, Epic has been playing arenas in North America where they played sports bars five years ago. Um, we've had yeah. Infinitum yeah. come by at Proc Power. We've had Vision of Atlantis do back to back tours here. Um, the list goes on and we're starting to see also North American bands actually also playing this style, which means... Which is pretty cool, yeah, because I remember the first time that I came over to the US and Canada, it was, everyone was telling us like, we don't have these bands over here. Yeah, it's like, very exotic here. I cannot be, they cannot be, because it's such a huge continent. Yeah. How, how can it be? But now it's... I wouldn't say it's, mainstream, but indeed, more bands surface now also in, the, in your part of the world. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think that's really cool. Now, that also means that, you know, usually when an artist like yourself puts out a video, you know, in five seconds, mm -hmm. there's 3,000 comments that say, come to Brazil, come to Brazil, come to Brazil. Uh, but now <laughs> there's also a ton of people demanding that we see you here, um, mm. where in the past for this kind of music, usually fans had to go to Europe uh, to, to see shows or yeah. festivals. So yeah. not to completely jump the gun, I know that you've only released two singles so far, but when can we see <laughs> you in, in Canada again? Oh, wow. I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I, I've, uh, I'm, I'm combining uh, being a singer together with my jewelry brand. And uh, uh, so I've decided to do this properly. Mm -hmm. um, but take the time. So like you just said, with two songs, I always make this joke when people ask me when we start touring and I say, well, we'll be a very short set list with only two songs. <laughs> <released>. <laughs> That's okay by me, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, no I, I will need to release uh, more songs before I will even start to think about that. And then I mean, in a serious way, because yeah, yeah, sure. thinking about returning to the stage. And if I'm really honest, it, it has to not be on stage. That's it, part of me is on pause and that doesn't feel right. Right. Um, because I really live to be on the stage. I'm a really, well, <laughs> theatrical person without wanting to give myself the diva stamp. But uh, I'm an extrovert and an extrovert needs an audience. Yes. And I do. Um, and I don't have that right now. I have my dog, but he's over there. You can't see me. He's over there asleep. And that's pretty much sometimes how it feels my audience is like now. <laughs> that's also why I'm very responsive to people who connect with me online. Mm -hmm. um, because after those... Well, behind those tiny words is a real person reaching out to me. And that's the same feeling that I could also get when singing for people. And uh, I find that a little bit of magic. So, yes, definitely looking forward to um, it going live again. But what that will look like, I have no idea. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. I'll get that when I'll get them. Okay. So that your audience will have to keep themselves entertained for the time being with yep. your your antics with Marcella um, that uh, <laughs> like is is she a friend or is she an enabler it's hard to tell at times ah, I think both <laughs> <laughs> no Marcella and I are really good friends and the funny thing is actually that through our podcast we've become even better friends so yeah, yeah, yeah. when we started out, it was kind of a joke, like, oh, can we become better friends? Like, right. no, of course not. But the answer is yes. There you go. I've learned okay. so much more about her. And that is because we now talk about things in depth that you would normally not touch upon. Right. And because now you make an episode and we set out to have episodes of 40 minutes. Our longest is um, 90 minutes. So... Um, math is definitely not one of our strong points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we just have so much fun and we discover new things about one another. And that's, um, yeah, our friendship has, has grown much, much deeper. And uh, she almost feels like a sister now. Or maybe skip the almost. She feels like a sister. And that's, that's yeah, it's that's really something, something special. She... Um, to explain a little bit how, how it feels now, 
I've seen her on stage so many times, mm -hmm. and she had a comeback concert together with her band Stream of Passion. Yeah, and I was there on the backstage, you know, helping helping her out with the clothing uh, attire, some things, everything. So I've seen it, I had seen her, but the moment she walked on stage, I was like, I was touched. I was, I found myself to be emotional, and yeah. um, that surprised me the level of, of, of that feeling. And I, at that moment, I realized, like, wow, she really like crawled into my heart. Anyone who wants to deepen their friendship, go host a podcast together. There you go. And and have some drinks as well while you're at it. Because I, I think that oh, that, when we that see the two helps. of you, you, you yeah. tend to have something. Now, I think in most cases it's coffee, uh, but uh, we, yeah. we've seen, uh, we've seen a lot of variety. We always start with coffee. <laughs> 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 and we have the quote of the day. There we go. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, social media, it's interesting because uh, it not only by creating this platform you've deepened your relationship with her your audience mm -hmm. is that feels more connected with you as well because they don't just see you perform songs or listen to you pre-recorded they get to know the real person so there's there's undoubtedly great things to social media at the same time because i was going through your instagram obviously it's still kind of weird that something stood out for me that You've got all this great content, but the photo in the last six months, I think, that got the most likes was you posting a photo of yourself in blonde hair and no context whatsoever. Like, like <laughs> it, it, there, there, there's something animalistic still to people going like, oh, that's weird and new and hope. Let, what's that like for you as a creator where you go like, I work with Marcel, we work our butts off and we got this great, you know, yeah. highlights reel of our podcast and, and, and people react to it great. But then, oh, here's a photo of my new hair and boom. Uh, it gets twice as many uh, many hits. Uh, does that mess you up at well, times in your mind? Um, I've been talking about this with Marcella, and I think it bugs her way more than it does me because I know people will react to her to um, something weird, something new. Right. So that was April Fools when I when I put that online, and well, here's a little marketing trick. What I do is, if I know something like that is going to score, same thing with birth birthdays, same thing with changing a profile picture, those things will always organically like get a, a bigger reach than other posts. Um, you can be bugged about that or you can use it in your advantage. So use that post, make it something funny, and then afterwards, when your reach is up, then post something that you really yeah. want people to see. can become frustrated um, about something you really do not control, not in the in the in the smallest way, mm -hmm. or you can try to have a workaround, think differently about it and, and try to use it. Yeah. Is that to bring us back to the start of the conversation? Is that an answer that Diana in 2023 can give but would not have given us in 2012? Maybe. Maybe, yeah, because, well, a lot of live lessons um, have been thrown at me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I've learned a lot. I am still learning a lot. Um, it, not only by mistakes, but also by um, the mirror that this whole process, um, well, shows me you know that yeah, yeah. i i run into myself on multiple levels on which i think ah okay so i work like this and this is not really helpful or i encounter something and i think okay so this still hurts mm -hmm. and that's when i need to find a workaround or simply uh, accept that things may still hurt and that they will for a little while yeah. um and then maybe bundle it and put it into to a new song, which is yeah. uh, precisely what I did with Unleash the Siren. Yeah. 
when you talk about dealing with very personal topics like that because yeah, yeah. like you use the concept of fighting a, a literal demon um as a metaphor to deal yeah. with ptsd so yeah. is that for you you know unequivocally um a way to release that out of your system or is there some level of ptsd that is created by because you know every time you sing a song that especially a song that becomes so popular yeah people want to hear that song you have to talk about the negativity in a way over and over again because i've i've asked this question to many singers or lyricists mm -hmm. i should say and there really seem to be two camps people that go like i've poured my heart and soul into it and and once i did i kind of don't want to go back to that because it brings all these bad memories back and then other people yeah. go like every time i sing this song i it's a step towards healing for me w where does that go uh, how does that work for you yeah that that's a very interesting question i think the hardest part for me was writing the lyrics um normally this is a process i really enjoy and now mm -hmm. i found myself postponing and postponing and postponing um and that's largely because i uh, had to dive back into the conversations mm -hmm. uh, that were had that um, still gave me uh, a feeling of being under threat and i didn't want to read those texts yeah i didn't want to read those emails again and that for me was that was was really a low um also you know just just reading them and then like <laughs> closing my laptop laptop and just no i don't i don't want to be in this room any yeah. longer where i've just reread that part of my life um but the lyrics um in the lyrics eventually i, I turn things around and that is something that i've never got to do because i uh, when i quit xandria i did that through a statement right. uh, that i put online and that was it mm -hmm. never spoken to anyone afterwards um so i never got to to turn things around the way I do in the lyrics, um, which is also it's a double thing because the song is obviously about uh, its PTSD. So everything that happened kept on spinning in my mind, and the I w the question is what is the real demon? Is it right. what happened, or is it? that it keeps on looping in your head and that you cannot like shut it off those voices mm -hmm. because is 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 problem a is that still going on is it really still a threat or is the threat just looping and and by looping getting bigger maybe getting different you know the, there's a whole narrative that that the voices in your head can can come up with and then now what is the real problem where does this demon hide mm -hmm. eventually i think for me i was keeping the demon alive i think a, a lot of people suffer from that not even uh, those diagnosed with ptsd those obviously have their demons but you you find that in 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 the most simplest of, of things nowadays people just like sitting in in the train and someone opposite like you staring at you and and with a very negative expression or something that uh, that can really follow you for a few days mm -hmm. and you can just wrap your mind around it like what did i do wrong but then is it really that this person wanted to do you wrong or is it your experience and some kind of old hurt or some kind of old fear that just went with it and made a story out of it? You know, it's that demon. Where is this demon? Mm -hmm. And for me, I eventually found out that I had to kill the demon in my head for me to be able to move on. And that is exactly what Unleashed the Siren is. Though, I must say, some parts of the actual problem are in the lyrics, of um, but they're very well hidden, especially in the Latin part. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Diana, I feel like I could ask you a thousand more questions. Uh, oh, and, and, and even with only two songs out, I can't imagine an interview when a full album is there will have to book five hours, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Uh, but um, uh, thank you for allowing uh, us to take you on this roller coaster from marketing strategies to therapeutic <laughs> conversations and cocktails and coffee in between. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being very open and honest with us. And um, mm -hmm. well, uh, with me, I'm not the queen either. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking, looking forward to hearing more music when they come out in 2024. And I think I speak yeah. on behalf of everyone we're fine with you playing the same two songs five times over and over if that means that you'll be on a stage. So <laughs> let's let's uh, book these shows and come out. Um, uh, we would love to have you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And um, well, new song in half a year, so maybe we should catch up then. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.